It's easy to get bummed out on a rainy day. Sometimes I find myself enjoying them, but today I didn't. Last night, I just got back from a near eight hour car drive. Another year of college in the books. Now all of my stuff is sprawled across my old room. And if anything is apparent from these videos, <laughs> I think it's how nostalgic I am. I'm really excited and looking forward to the summer. I plan to spend more time doing what I love and getting somewhere for it. But although there is an admittedly relaxing feeling to it, I can't seem to shake some sort of feeling of looming dread. There's something about revisiting the same space that really gives me anxiety. When I moved away for college, I started over fresh. It felt sort of like a true reset button. Like I jolted myself into life and displayed a progression that could be pinpointed as progress on a map. Not to say that it wasn't, but if I think of progression in the literal like that, suddenly when I come back after a year away, I feel the same response in the negative direction. It feels like regression. I'm not regressing. I, I tell myself that, and I think it's true on some sort of measurable scale, but I can still feel deep in my heart that I'm not moving. Something that really hopelessly affected me when I lived in this house was years I spent watching romantic comedies. A lot of people have called out and complained about things like the characters not kissing or getting together into the last episode of it in a lot of anime series, and this is a fundamental flaw the genre has, but I want to draw attention less to those cliches and tropes, and more to the effect it has on me. Honestly, I'm really grateful for the experiences I've had romantically. I've done more with more people than most of my friends, but... Isn't that kind of a disgusting scale to measure it by? I've only ever actually been in one non-toxic relationship and it only lasted a month. Shouldn't we rate relationships by happiness? I think that is what I loved the most through high school about romantic comedies. Even though I hated that they never got together most of the time, the dynamic, the feeling between the characters had some sort of love that I expected out of the world. It was super lighthearted, sometimes heart-wrenching, but you can always keep good feelings until the end. There are some exceptions I'd like to make a special note to, or otherwise entire videos, like Toradora or Golden Time. Actually, no. Let's actually talk about Golden Time in this video. When I talked about progression and moving away to the big city, Golden Time was one of the first anime I watched in my first week of school there. The character was a blank slate late to orientation, trying to find his way and stumbling into like-minded friends. I felt so entirely like him. Then he said this quote, which gave me chills, and I wrote it down on my phone. I'm in Tokyo. I'm really here. I feel like I can be reborn as a new person here. I can meet new friends, stay in a new place, and live in a new world. It's so much fun, and I am so happy and satisfied. Even if I am sad or lonely or make mistakes, everything shines like gold. I feel like I can lead a blindingly bright life. If I keep living life like that, I'll probably fall in love eventually. I want to fall in love. I want to feel like I can have that. If I can have that love. As you can see from the screenshot, I was telling the truth. I really did write it down on my phone, and it's still there. August 20th of 2016, the bottom corner certifies it, and I remember this feeling. Almost everyone I met my first semester, I don't talk to any longer. I did end up getting into the only good relationship I ever had, but summer came and we split up. Then an entirely new school year just ended, and that rests on top of it, burying the memory as a fond one. I don't think it was naive though, not entirely. Four years in high school, I watched these stupidly oversimplified relationships while living in a real-life manipulative ones, or living in the two-year gap between relationships. I think it was good that I was still so optimistic. I'm leaving out a few considerably harsher details, but I know it is likely that there are some people watching this who've never been in a relationship, and people who want that one person who connects and cares about what they have to say, that is interested in the same things that they are, that person that doesn't pressure you or do things without consent. Don't give up looking for them. The world isn't perfect and nobody is, but there is somebody, probably a few people, who care for you, and a relationship of abuse is worse than no relationship at all, at least from my experience. Still, while Golden Time had its ups and downs, I found the lighter half of the show much less engaging. Why? It could have been the more supernatural element seeping in, but I think for me it was the mystery, the excitement, or getting to know someone you don't. That great, awkward, fumbling, clumsy, romantic gestures and feelings that make the show engaging, and after they got into a relationship, spoiler, 
there isn't much to do but go up and honestly i don't romanticize having kids or getting married or going up what going up signifies it's almost like that exciting stage of youth and mystery and excitement and oh let's go on a date you know is closed and you're fighting to retain that youth becomes a chore that's why i never related to those romance anime from experience i could input myself briefly into the reality that they showed me now that I am out of high school, I still catch myself watching them. It's a magical period before things got overwhelmingly serious and the world seemed boundless. For me, I am still in that stage, but the doors do seem to be closing. I'm fighting to keep them open, but I can only go on so long before I start hurting the long-term happiness of my life. I don't know what to do. I want to be an adult, I want to enter the adult world and be a functioning member of society and do great things and help people, but I also just kinda wanna curl up in my bed. One show that brought me back to that happiness was Karakai Jozu no Takagi-san, which is, I think the English is like masterful teaser Takagi-san, it sounds kinda weird in English, which finished airing last season. It was a light-hearted, happy, funny romance between two people, simple to the core. No three episode long misunderstanding arcs, it just rested on the characters, and the show went on, and I saw their relationship grow. You got to see their slow evolution towards their feelings, fighting embarrassment while realizing exactly what they meant to each other. I'll die happy if it gets a season two. It summarized the feeling that I got from all these shows growing up, but cut the fat and streamlined only the good things, without being watered down or badly executed mess. So I'm back home for the summer. And even though it's rainy, I am grateful. I'm alive. Things have excitement, mystery, and possibility, and I'll do all I can to catch it. It feels kind of weird uh, always like having an additional little thank you at the end, but I wanted to say just thank you so much for all the people who gave me a warm welcome back. You're probably seeing some comments on the screen right now. A few of the examples, just a few of them. Um, after a six month hiatus it's really just impressive and amazing that anybody would care or remember or come back um if anybody has anything they want to send me or talk to me or whatever um my twitter is in the description um yeah so i i guess i'll see you soon